the absence of a father is affecting nearly every social, demographic, and economic class in America. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 24 million children in America, one out of three, live in biological father-absent homes. I pretty much don't have any relationship with my dad. I had a knife to my throat and I was, I was saying, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this. Dad doesn't love me. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. Why would he leave my family in the first place? My dad, he also abused my, he abused my mother. The Road Not Taken examines the devastating effects of fathers absent in the lives of their children. This documentary will follow three young men as they undergo an incredible life-changing experience. Since I've been here, I've seen my mother in like, I guess 24 hours now. It's been kind of different. Haven't talked to her, no contact. Uh, I think this is the longest time I've ever been without talking to her. And it's really difficult, I guess. And I won't be able to see her till Sunday. Um, my first 24 hours here on the ranch is, it's been a pretty crazy experience. Like, uh, our, our sir, he made us cut off all of our hair to look just like him. And I definitely did not want that to happen because I kind of like was growing my waves in my hair and I kind of like that. And we had to go outside, uh, do push-ups, jumping jacks, uh, six inches, something that I'm not really that good at. Six inches, I'm not that good at that. And it was just really mentally straining after a while, like keep on doing it. and. Coming, in, coming into uh, the Steve Harvey program, mentoring camp, I felt that I was not mentally strong and I feel like when I leave here, I'm definitely gonna be mentally strong, especially with 24 hours a day, like working hard the whole time. I just like Texas. Cause I'm a boy from West Virginia, on top of the Mason Dixon line. So we gonna learn a little slang and we gonna learn it every day. Oh. Oh. No, no, a little bit better than that. Oh. Oh. We're going to be the best team right out here. We're the red team. Oh. Oh. So if you're going to show me something good there for the whole week, we're going to get it right. We're going to get it right the first time. If we get it right, then I'm easy. If we get it wrong, I'm your worst nightmare. It was my first day as soon as I got the bus. Mr. Harvey pulled me to the side and asked me, what, what's your name? And do you play football? And I was like, yes, sir. He said, what position? And, um, and I said, I play defense tackle and fullback. And he put me, uh, he was like, okay, I'll see you later. And that was like a shock to me. Like he pulled me out of everybody to ask about football. Well, yesterday when I first got here, I had to do like 50 push-ups because I kept smiling. Seven, eight, nine, 10, Rico. There ain't no smiling here. This is serious business, all right? And when we, we have to keep running to bearings back and forth to different places, get haircuts. We had to get the same haircut of our curl. That was kind of harsh, but I guess. So I have not spoken to my mom and, uh, since since we got here to the ranch. So it, it's been a kind of crazy experience. I usually speak to my mom every day. I love my mom. Like, that's all I got, really. 
her and my sister and my family. It's like the whole week I don't see her until Sunday, so it's like a, it's like really different. I kind of, I'm like kind of on my own. Had to like make choices for myself, the right choices, the wrong choices. Do what you say you're gonna do. If you do that, your mother will respect you. The girls will respect you. Other boys will respect you. Your employer will respect you. The Steve and Marjorie Harvey Foundation. Um, really came off of the Steve Harvey Foundation. When we started the Steve Harvey Mentoring Program, we were just the Steve Harvey Foundation. And that was in 2009. And once we did our first mentoring camp, Marjorie decided that she wanted to do something the same way for our, our girls. And so that's when we kind of merged over the year and became the Steve and Marjorie Harvey Foundation. But the work was begun by my dad with the mentoring camp for boys. This has just always been his passion. This has always been his, his, his vision and his work though, because this is not, he didn't just start doing this. He's always been committed to, to the community. He's a humanitarian in his heart and he loves the people and he loves seeing how he can help transform and inspire them. I see it. Every face that I'm seeing here, you remind me of an autopsy that I've done where I put bullets out of people's heads. This is not a game. This is your life. How many of you don't have a father in your house? Okay? And so for the age, from the age of 10 years old to 22 years old, I didn't have a father here in my life either. So me and my father are going to share our story with you just about what that means and about how powerful forgiveness is. But when you can forgive and you can say that no matter what, that I'm going to love them no matter what and it doesn't matter, then you're truly loving like Christ loved the world. I've changed in a lot of ways. Like, definitely I'm going to respect my mom a lot more and... I just love my mom a lot, and I just need to. I'm, well, I've got I got a job now. I'm like as soon as I get back to Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, I have a job there now. So I'm gonna be helping out in the family in that way with the income, and I just need to. I just I've learned a lot. I'm the only one in the world that has this one situation going on. That my father sometimes in my life, sometimes not, and mom she's always gone. I'm, I felt like I was the only one. I found like people in my group same way as me from different cities in the same town as me. So I found out I'm not the only one. This is our fifth year. And so it's been awesome work that we've done because we've grown. I've seen the changes over the last five years. When you start from absolutely nothing, we didn't have golf carts. <laughs> to drive, ride around in, you, foot, you were footing it everywhere. And just how the sponsors have really jumped on and jumped on the bandwagon behind our program to know that Steve Harvey, you know, my father, is committed to, to our people and committed to the community. A lot of y'all got some good boys up on this here. They, 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 they polite, they're kind, they're good students, they're, they're courteous, they're, but they're boys. There you go, 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 I believe the role of the Army, we are the example. We are those close up, up in front mentors serving as the role models and the examples for these young men. We can tell them about fatherhood and manhood. We can tell them about how to be a leader. But 
been showing them day in, day out, night in, night out. We are the example right in front of them. Be a man, you're going to have to get in some real uncomfortable moments. And we kept them under duress out here. Oh, we had a lot of free time. But let me explain something to you. It ain't the free time that shapes a boy into a man. A man cannot be judged in moments of comfort and convenience, but in turmoil and strife. We had a young man in here suffering a tragic loss while he was here. Them boys rallied to him. They gathered around him. They held him up. This, this, is, not a, this is not a learned behavior. This is a talk behavior. It's, it's been an amazing experience. And I know he spent a lot of money for it. Like a lot of money for it. And I'm really thankful for it. And, you know, I, like hopefully I can become a JC next year so I can come back and have that experience again. Picture. If they don't give me one, don't be looking at the camera close, gonna be some cussing. <laughs>